I'm Cal Kellogg, and my hybrid lead core system has brought lead core trolling back into the spotlight for trout and salmon anglers all over the country. If you'd like the world's best lead core trolling rod, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of my iconic bright yellow lead core rods today. You won't regret it because you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. We are not talking fishing today, but please don't click away. The name of this channel is Fish Hunt Shoot. And what, what I'm gonna talk about, it's hunting related, but it's, it's more personal than that. I'm gonna kinda invite you guys inside, kinda inside my family, inside my head. I consider all you guys that watch me consistently on YouTube to be, you know, family anyway. Um, I can say just about anything to you guys, share my thoughts with you about what's good, what's not, what you should use, what you shouldn't use. And, you know, I have a lot of guys reach out to me um, for advice about fishing and about other things. So let's get started. I want to show you the most amazing rack of black tailed deer antlers I've ever seen. I've, I've ever seen in person. Now, I'm not long arming these. That's right against my chest there. These antlers are every bit as big as they look. Look at that. Look at all those points, all that junk. Look at that eye guard. That's a big three inch long eye guard. This, this side here is just as impressive. This is just a massive set of antlers. Look at the, look at the mass on the underside of those horns. This was just an epic, epic, massive Northern California blacktail buck. He wasn't harvested. These are shed horns. So before I, sh I show you more of these horns, let's get into the backstory. Let's go way back in time to the 1970s. I'm 54 now. Let's go back in time until, you know, about the time when I was six or seven years old. My dad, my uncle and I, we were kind of inseparable back in those days, okay? Um, my uncle's a, a Vietnam veteran. He worked construction with my dad. Um, I spent a ton of time with my uncle. Those guys started taking me deer hunting with them when I was about three years old. And uh, I went every year after that. Um, finally, I got to be, you know, 12 years old when I could carry my own rifle. Um, we harvested a bunch of bucks. We hunted hard. It was great. It was a family thing. And uh, we used to go to a restaurant when we were out hunting and these horns were mounted on the wall of the restaurant. And I first touched these horns about 47 years ago, okay? A long time ago. Backstory on the restaurant is that the guy would take the, the vegetable scraps and stuff and he would put them outside and he had a little population of deer there and he'd feed them grain and stuff at times, but they were absolutely wild deer and this guy showed up. This guy showed up um, he would come back, he would feed, he would chase does, he would do his thing, totally wild deer, and he ended up shedding these antlers outside the restaurant. The owner of the restaurant, his name was Bill, he picked them up and he mounted them on a piece of wood and he covered it with maroon leather. And I was in awe of these things when I was a kid, okay? so. All those years I'm hunting with my, my uncle and my dad and uh, the guy that owned the restaurant, he was getting on in years. And eventually, talking to my uncle, my uncle said, you know what, I, I would really, really feel privileged if I could have those antlers and someday I'd like to have them, you know, paired with a cape and I'd like to get a deer head mounted with those incredible antlers. Well, long story short, my uncle got the antlers, and then as time went forward, him and my dad had a major falling out. And I don't know what was behind that. I don't wanna know what was behind that. I was a teenager when it happened, and uh, I hadn't talked to my uncle for at least 25 years until last week, okay? And uh, I get a call, actually Wes gets a call out of the blue, and it's my uncle, and he's looking for me, and he didn't find me through the YouTube channel here. He found me through an ad for one of my sponsored boats back in the day, and the phone number on the ad was Wes's phone number, and the next thing I know, 
I am talking to my uncle. And of course, you know, you haven't talked to your uncle in that amount of time, my mind is spinning. Did somebody die? Is somebody gonna die? Is somebody sick? What the heck is going on? And it was nothing like that. It was my uncle and he knew what an avid, avid young hunter I was, how, how excited I was to be accompanying those guys out in the woods. And he says, you know what? You remember those antlers that were at the restaurant? I said, I absolutely do. He goes, you know, I've had them for a long time. I've shown them to a lot of hunters. They're very impressive. Would you like to have them? Can I mail them to you? And I was, I was blown away. I didn't think I was ever going to see these antlers again. Um, the next thing I know, there's a big old box on my porch and all kinds of stuffing and paper and stuff in there protecting them. And out they came. And uh, I can't even describe the feeling. I can't even describe the feeling right now holding these in my hand. But it, it, it's kind of a family legacy sort of thing. Um, just something I wanted to share with you guys. These are absolutely amazing antlers. Um, the story itself is, is pretty amazing to me. I didn't know if I was ever going to talk to my uncle again. And, and I really kind of forgot about these antlers. I never thought I would see these again. Yet, here they are. I've, uh, I've been talking to my uncle. Um, it's pretty wild. It's, it's, just, it's just pretty wild. It's just kind of a full circle sort of thing. And I just really wanted to share it with you guys. And uh, for you guys that are blacktail hunters out there, imagine if you were out in the woods and this thing came walking up at you. This side here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven solid points on that side, plus the eye guard. And this side here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points here too. You could count this side and say it's it's nine points if you if you wanted to count every little bump. But the split eye guard right there, just massive, impressive. And uh, I think the next time I get a blacktail buck, I'm gonna take the cape, at least this is what I'm thinking at this time, I want to take the cape and uh, do what, what my uncle never got around to doing. I would love to have a full shoulder mount made with these antlers. Um, at any rate, first time I touched them, about 47 years ago. Um, just, just, a, just a piece of family legacy here. This is part of my childhood that's come back to me at you know 54 years old. Um, I'm blown away and I just wanted to share that with you guys. Look at those. Those are the most impressive blacktail horns I have ever seen, I've ever touched. Just a massive multi-point trophy buck, totally non-typical, just, uh, just an amazing animal. And uh, I, I don't ever remember seeing the animal alive, but my uncle said, you should have saw that thing when it was in velvet. <laughs> I can only imagine. Anyway, I'm signing off for now. I just wanted to share that story with you guys, show you these amazing horns, these amazing antlers, and uh, I just think it's the coolest thing ever. So anyway, thanks for listening to me babble on about these antlers. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. You know where to go if you're looking for fishing gear, fishhuntshoot.com. And uh, once again, I'll see you. I'll see you here real soon on YouTube, guys. It was a uh, it was a privilege to share that story with you and show you these amazing blacktail buck antlers. I'm out of here. I'll catch you later. <laughs>